Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Check out our patches of resin. They're dry. They're dry and solid and flush, which I'm really quite happy about. So we'll keep doing that for the next couple of weeks. When something appears, we'll patch it up before probably the end of May, we give it a final anti-slip coat and cover up all this patchwork. But I'm really pleased how it's turned out. Anyway, today, uh, the beers that we brewed last week have all pretty much fermented out over the weekend, apart from the coconut, it's still got about four or five points to go. So that means we need to start working on our processors. So uh, they free-rised actually, up to 21. So they've had their diacetyl rest. We need to drop the cone for the first time. We need to open the CO2 inlet valves, which are these little blue things up there. Then that's keeping a positive pressure of CO2 on the tanks. So when we chill, we don't draw oxygen in. Then we lower the temperatures to 10 degrees. We had our first edition of Finings, the Finings adjunct. All this can be done today, even though it's got separate date stamps on it. And we drop the cone again collect yeast which we won't be doing on this batch add brass LP and dry hop one will happen and then obviously uh, we mix that after a couple of days in the tank out of this port and back into the bottom and because we've done two cone drops there shouldn't be that much yeast that we're rousing with the hops and then uh, we add dry hop two we give that another rouse as well the day after and then we will crash to four degrees and it'll be ready then for packaging so just about a week away for these beers to go into cask and in that time hopefully we'll have brewed a new batch of beer on the SS Brewtech kit the pilot kit so I've got some things that have arrived in the post over the weekend one of them is some insulating jackets for the firm Zillas. I know it says 27 litre jacket, but I've been advised that these do fit the 55 litre all-rounders. And as you can see, it's a pretty snug fit. So I've grabbed a few of those. I've also grabbed the webbing that holds the base on so we can move them around a little bit easier. And we've got some thermo wells to put in there. And one of the first beers that we're gonna be brewing is this one so I'll do a proper video on it obviously when we come round to the brew day but I've gone for a provisional X4 category on Beersmith of uh, the Katrina uh, Sour but it's probably not quite in that range we're using the Philly Wild Brew yeast which is a yeast so it's not going to be a kettle sour as in the traditional sense it's going to be brewed as a normal beer and we're going to be adding a little bit of lactic acid to help it along and also some raspberry and uh, the raspberry is going to go into secondary so we don't blow off all of the aroma during fermentation and we're going to put in that's incorrect I'm going to change that it should be six liters of raspberry puree which we have over here from Ravi Fruit or actually it's bought from Keelink in Sheffield so we'll see how we get on with that that's the pineapple mango you can see what we're getting up to ah framboise raspberry there it is so I've managed to stick the the base retainer if you like on the bottom of these so basically just these straps hook onto the base I think it does the job I think it looks fine to be fair I mean functional is what we're after here and it's not too unattractive I suppose but that doesn't make much difference because once we put the jacket on the insulation jacket we're just uh, we're just gonna have to live with the firmzilla branding might have to just change that 27 to 55 I don't know. It's not a big dish, big issue, big issue, big, <laughs> big issue. And also, you'll be pleased to see 
the pilot kit is out. It's had a good clean. I've just finished cleaning it with some caustic solution and then rinsed it all out. So she's now ready to rock and roll. I think this is where it's going to have to live because we've got the cable running up to our 16 amp feed in the grain store and also we've got the convenience of connecting the hose pipe to the plate chiller as well from just over there and draining down straight into the floor drain of course and a little mash paddle here ready to go and the beautiful control panel is all lit up and it's just waiting for us to fill her up with water so that's going to be a job for me to do before I go home this evening we've also got a delivery look at these little beauties wild brew Philly sour lactic acid production during alcohol fermentation beautiful stuff so we're not going for the kettle sour straight off we're going for a yeast souring uh, strain and we've got some verdant IPA yeast this I'm interested in using in a fruit beer a mango IPA and then we've got some Kvirk ale yeast the Voss variety and I'll be looking at using that as well in some IPA or pale ales in the next few days but I haven't managed to design a recipe for that yet so we've just got the raspberry sour and we've got a mango IPA to go with the verdant. We'll move on to the others as the week progresses I think um, and I'll talk to you about the recipes when I've designed them. So what I'm going to do now is completely beer unrelated or more accurately completely unrelated to beer I believe I should have said then. And that involves a little bit of fabrication work so ever since we dug over the garden at home uh, we don't have a washing line I think most of you will be familiar with a washing line it's probably quite a British thing um, but yeah so I need to create a stand for a rotary washing line and uh, I think we're going to use probably some of this pipe this uh, square box in here and make some type of outriggers for it or something like that. We shall have a look but first I need to nip home and measure the OD of the pipe that we're going to be working with. So here is my plan. I've been home and measured the internal diameter of the washing line stand or washing rotary washing line. 32 mil so the ID on this scaffolding tube is a little bit on the big side to be fair at 40 but I know that that pipe on the rotary air dryer has some inserts on it so hopefully we can use them to pack out any difference fail that I'm going to drill a couple of bolt holes in the side of this and weld on or even just tap some threads into there and then we'll run some M8 bolts into this pipe work to keep it grabbing hold of the rotary line prevent it spinning around that might not be uh, beneficial though might not be what's wanted so I'll just drill drill the holes we'll see Gemma might want to be able to spin it around, I'm not sure. And uh, I've got this plate. This is 10mm thick steel plate which was donated to the cause by Froggy many, many years ago. Alright, maybe just a couple. But, God, it weighs an absolute mammoth. So I think this whole unit here is probably about 80, 60 kg, 80 kg. So I'm thinking if I cut a piece off like that, that's going to be around 25-30 kilograms. That's more than enough to weigh it down. And if it isn't, 
We could always just chuck a bag of sand on it or something to stop it from moving around. But I think it'll be pretty mobile as is. So I'm going to see if I can cut a slice off, make it square obviously, and then we'll weld this on after I've tapped and drilled it. Always a scary moment for me. Tapping threads. I never have much luck with these pieces of equipment. So I've already run through the taper tap and now we're running through the uh, second tap. Keeping it lubed up boys and girls. Keeping it lubed up. And we're doing a turn, half a turn, quarter turn back. Oh yeah, I think we've, uh, we've cracked this one. I'm happy with that. So let's see. Oh, shit back. My tap spanner fell off. So let's just give her a blast out with the brush and some lube and let's see if our M12 bolts fit. Ready. Oh, a little bit on the tight side. We might have to go along with the third tapping tool to get that home. So this one's the final cutting tool in these tap sets. This, the, the, there are three taps in the set and I think they all have different depths of flutes to cut. Yeah, I definitely feel some work going on there. So this will be embiggening the hole Make sure I turn back and just break the chip. There we go. She's moving. She's moving freely. That's nice. I think we're going to have cracked it this time, don't you, boys? I do. Little squirt, and then the bolt. Oh, look at that! That's just beautiful. That is. That's just a work of art. So I'm going to flip this over to the other side, and then when I'm done, I'm going to just weld a little piece of steel across these bolts. So you can use your hands to tighten and loosen them. So much for cutting down on fabrication on the channel, eh? But to be fair, I will be brewing some new beer recipes tomorrow, so I think we can just allow ourselves a little bit of procrastination. Right, righty tighty, lefty loopsy.
真的跟我。This is going to get noisy, but I thought why not plug in the uh, plasma cutter to do the chopping. Makes sense, doesn't it? Because we've got one. So I'll just put that 100 psi. That's a lot of pressure, does our plasma cutter. I know I'm off for uh, chopping it around, but. It is what it is. Right, let's plug it in. There's the pulley. There we go. And let's not forget the ground. How's that? Right, we're looking at 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 7, 10 mil plate. I should really have some protective on my legs here. We'll see. Get rid of these. And I need to sport. My groovy plasma cutting shades. Again. A gift from Froggy. Thank you very much, Squire. Right, let's see if this burns my legs. Well, it doesn't look like it's going all the way through. Oh no, it definitely is. Right. I'm just a bit worried about setting fire to my uh, plug sockets over here. I've just had to tuck them out of the way. Let's carry on.
kind of don't like it. I think I'm going to revert back to uh, to the grinder. I reckon we're just a little bit on the thick side, unfortunately, for this machine. It's worth potentially burning her out, wrecking all the tips, making a really sloppy cut. I might as well just put her away and come back again another day. Well, it's kind of obvious what gives you the best cut, isn't it? So, there we have angle grinder, cutting disc. And here it's shiny. And here we have the remains of the plasma cutter. A bit messy, but sorted now. So I'm just going to clean this edge up and I'm probably going to weigh it, see exactly how heavy this piece is.
There she blows, boys and girls. There she blows. So let's get in there. Have a look at this weld. This is straight off the bat. There we go. This is a MIG weld. And uh, a little bit of undercutting on the upright. You can see there. Which means I probably have the power about about right actually. I could go around and put another pass on top of that route. But I think for a MIG onto some 10mm plate and some 5mm pipe that's pretty good that bit there I had a bounce and there's loads of bits of wire like that so I just blasted it to melt the wire off more than anything but I'm pleased with that I think that looks spot on so we'll stick some hammerite on it or something like that and then that's done so it's just left for me to put some little tabs on the bolts so we can wind the bolts in and out on this side here like that to secure the pipe work in there the uh, the dryer and I'll put it on the scales it's just coming out about 13 kilograms which is a bit on the light side to be fair but I've got these old uh, old fork truck wheels pallet truck wheels they're about five kilos each so that's 10 kilograms extra to put on there and uh, well, I could always put some weights on there as well from the old weight set that I don't use but there we are so I think all that's left for me to do is sort these little bits out and we'll take it home and we'll see what it looks like in the real world. The aftermath of raiding the scrap bin to make a useful piece of equipment. I must remember to take these widow makers off of this piece of steel before I put it away. In fact, might be able to do it now one handed. There we go, safety third. Right, everything's off. This is all ready for tomorrow's brew day. All I have to do is heat up some water in the morning. I'm not gonna set the timer for it. It'll be done in time. I need to put some acid in the cask wash so I can rinse the tanks, or I might just drop some Persid in the uh, in the firm zillas and give them a shake. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it um, Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with that to be fair and We'll weigh out the grains in the morning and make a proper video about it all boys and girls But as far as today's concerned, thank you very much. Oh, no, we've got to go and check out the uh, The dryer. Let's do that. I Think I've earned that don't you folks? Oh yes, check her out in all of her glory. How very working class, indeed. Works a treat. And on that note, I think I will bid you adieu. See you on the next one, boys and girls. Oh look, there's a hat. <laughs>